Hi, my name is Jessica Cole, and I am a board-certified adult gerontological acute care nurse practitioner. Today I will be discussing with you my project, which focuses on the utility of a preventive surgical site infection bundle for use in colorectal surgery. This project was chosen as it focuses on something that is extremely common to hospitals nationwide. Surgical site infections account for 17% of all hospital-acquired infections and remain one of the most costly patient outcomes that can happen in healthcare today. Surgical site infections are also very costly to patients as they increase complications and lead to death for some patients who acquire them. The focus of my project is on colorectal surgery, and the reason for this is that colorectal surgery routinely has much higher percentages of surgical site infections compared to other specialties just based on the nature of the organs that are involved. In addition, the Joint Commission recognizes surgical site infections and the reduction of them as one of its 2014 National Patient Safety Goals. This project took place at Michael Callahan Federal Medical Center, which is located in Las Vegas, Nevada. MothMIC is a 46-bed facility that serves Department of Defense beneficiaries, which includes active duty military, reservists, retirees, and all of their families. The American College of Surgeons developed the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program as a means to measure and improve the quality of surgical care in facilities around the nation. Now, NISQIP is a nationally validated, risk-adjusted, outcomes-based program that basically monitors all of the data associated with surgical cases within a facility. It's also broken down by specialties. So, for instance, um, a facility can look at surgical site infection rates not only for the entire hospital, but also based on specialty. MOFMIC was chosen as one of the sites to have a NISQIP program and we have been recording data at our facility for over two years. The reason this project focuses on the surgical site infection rates at MOFMIC was related to the fact that NISQIP data over the previous few years had demonstrated a slightly increasing rate of surgical site infections for all specialties. In addition, one of the highest um, surgical site infection rates within the facility was in colorectal surgery. Now this is to be expected as colorectal surgery is um, al already associated with a higher rate of infection. However, both the surgical site infection rate for the entire hospital and the surgical site infection rate for colorectal surgery were listed in the outlying deciles and also in the needs improvement categories. More specifically, in the period between July of 2013 through June of 2014, the facility had seven infections out of 28 patients in the colorectal surgery realm, which was a 25% um, infection rate. Now, with the risk-adjusted adjusted data from NISQIP, the expected rate of infections was 7.63%. As you can see, this is a great difference in what they expected our rate of infection to be compared to what it was. In addition, the data that was obtained between January of 2014 through December of 2014 showed four infections out of 11 colorectal cases which was a 36% infection rate. And it was just, it appeared as though the infection rate was only getting higher and nothing was being done to bring it back down. So the executive staff was very interested in creating some sort of project or improvement project to address um, the growing concerns about the infection rates for the hospital. Every facility aims to provide the best care possible for their patients, and therefore the ultimate purpose of this project 
was to improve the overall quality of care delivered to patients undergoing colorectal surgery at MOFMIC in order to reduce their chances of acquiring a surgical site infection. The need of this, for this project was demonstrated by the NISQIP data which showed that Michael Callahan had a higher than expected rate of surgical site infections associated with colorectal surgery. In addition, MOFMIC always aims to provide the best care and therefore wishes to align their goals with the Joint Commission's National Patient Safety Goals, one of which is the reduction of surgical site infections. The ultimate goals of this project are to achieve an overall reduction in the surgical site infection rate associated with colorectal surgery at Michael Callahan Federal Medical Center. The way of achieving this goal is to implement a preventive SSI bundle for colorectal surgical cases. In addition, the project hopes to improve compliance with several re recommended Joint Commission and NISQIP guidelines that are included in the preventive bundle. The project also hopes to decrease the readmission rates associated with surgical site infections and reduce hospital expenditure associated with surgical site infection costs. The study included all adult patients who underwent routine colorectal surgery. The surgeries took place between April 1st and June 30th of 2015 at Michael Callahan Federal Medical Center. The SSI preventive bundle consisted of 13 measures that were implemented in the preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative periods of the patient's stay and took place in both the inpatient and outpatient settings. This graph outlines all of the 13 measures that are included in the preventive SSI bundle. In the preoperative period, the patient was required to perform a chlorhexidine shower using pre-soaked chlorhexidine cloths, and what they would do is utilize these cloths the night before surgery and then again once they checked into the hospital in the morning. In addition, they all perform the same mechanical bowel prep, which for our purposes we use the modified Nichols prep. They were to receive their ertapenem within one hour of the incision. The surgical field was to be prepped with chlorhexidine alcohol. And also in the preoperative period, the patient was given um, counseling and education on the prevention of surgical site infections. Intraoperatively, the, um, the surgeon used a fascial wound protector. They performed a gown and glove change prior to the fascial closure. And they also had a dedicated wound closure tray. The OR traffic um, was attempted to be limited, and also the patient's temperature and glucose were continuously monitored to ensure that they had euglycemia and normothermia throughout the entire procedure. Postoperatively, the patient had their sterile dressing removed within 48 hours, and after it was removed, daily washings of the incision with chlorhexidine. In addition, their glucose and temperature were continuously monitored, and again, um, the patient received counseling on the prevention of surgical site infections. I created all the educational handouts that were utilized for the patients and included information on how to perform the chlorhexidine washes, how to perform the modified Nichols bowel prep, and also information on surgical site infection prevention. The data collection process utilizes the NISQIP database in which the program coordinator automatically collects all data associated with every surgical case within the facility. This data is then 
entered in into the national database and the outcomes are compared to all of the facilities that are included in the NISQIP program within the United States. In addition, our NISQIP coordinator added all 13 bundle measures into her local indicators and she will be reviewing every single case to ensure that each bundle measure was completed and documented within the patient's chart. A prospective cohort study will be used to analyze the data, including the, the pre-intervention data and the post-intervention data, to determine success of the project. The project took place over a three-month period, and within this three-month period, nine patients were started on the preventive bundle process. Out of these nine patients that started the bundle process, only three of them were able to complete the entire process, which included the preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative procedures, as the remaining six of the patients did not end up having the full colorectal surgery. Unfortunately, this resulted in an extremely small sample size for my study. In addition, the NISQIP program coordinator collects data in, in the past and therefore has a two to three month lag time for when her data is fully processed. Therefore, as the study just ended on June 30th, the final data analysis will not conclude for another one to two months. We do have preliminary data and the preliminary data is promising and therefore I still have some results to report. However, the full data analysis will not occur for another month or two. This graph highlights some of the results that we do have and can report at this time for the surgical site infection rates for colorectal surgery. As you can see, um, this shows that between July of 2013 and June of 2014, the number of colorectal cases was 28, the number of surgical site infection rates was 7, and the surgical site infection rate for this time period was 25%. Moving forward six months from January 2014 to December of 2014, the number of colorectal cases dropped, it was only seven, however, the number of surgical site infections was four, and this led to a 36% um, surgical site infection rate. Moving to our three-month period between April 1st and June 30th, the number of colorectal cases was only three, however, currently, the surgical site infection rate is zero, as none of these patients incurred a surgical site infection. So despite the fact that only three patients were included in the study over the three-month period, the preliminary data does suggest that the study has been successful and that the bundle is working to reduce surgical site infections, as zero infections have occurred thus far since implementation. The actual implementation process actually went relatively smoothly, smoothly and there has not been much resistance to the changes that were needed to implement the bundle. Once we get the data obtained from the NISQIP program coordinator will be able to evaluate the actual compliance rate with the bundle measures. In addition, once the data is analyzed and finalized, we will be able to determine if there was in fact an actual significant reduction in surgical site infection rates, including the period where the study was implemented. The obvious limitations of this study are related to the fact that this study only had three patients, which is an extremely small sample size. Unfortunately, we are a small facility and we were not expecting to have very many cases to begin with. However, three was much fewer than expected and unfortunately, out of the nine patients that were enrolled, only three ended up completing it. In addition, this presentation is limited by the fact that the final data analysis has not occurred due to the fact that NISQIP 
data analysis occurs about two to three months behind. While the study has been limited by the sample size, the implications have still been far-reaching within my facility. For instance, prior to the study ending um, in June, the hospital leadership decided to implement parts of the preventive bundle in the orthopedics department. In addition, the executive staff and surgical council committee have continued to embrace the changes and are currently looking to implement the bundle in many other areas within the facility. The future recommendations for this project obviously include continued data collection for at least a year so that the data from the time of implementation can be compared to previous years to determine if there was a true significance in the reduction of surgical site infections. In addition, the standardization of parts of the bundle should be implemented to include all surgical cases within the facility. This final slide just outlines the key references that were utilized for this presentation. I hope that you have enjoyed my presentation and I look forward to the future success of the Preventive Surgical Site Infection Bundle.